friends, I'm Abby and today I'm starting a new reading vlog. I plan to spend the next week and a half focusing on reading some Christmas or holiday novels. Really just anything that has to do with the holiday season because like many other people, I'm not in the holiday spirit this year. I'm normally the queen of Christmas. I've normally finished my shopping by now and it's currently the day after my birthday. So it's officially time in my mind that it is time for Christmas, but that's not how I'm feeling this year. I have done most of my Christmas shopping, thankfully, but almost all of it I did online this year, which wasn't as fun. And I'm not getting to do a lot of the Christmas activities I love. I'm probably not going to get to spend Christmas with my whole family, which is disappointing. And I'm just not really getting the holiday experience that I'm used to and that I love. I'm sure lots of other people are in the exact same boat as me, but it's disappointing. <laughs> so I'm trying to counteract that this year by reading some books about Christmas or that I think will get me in the Christmas mood. So from now until Christmas, or I guess I'm hoping to have this vlog up on Christmas Eve. If I've succeeded, happy Christmas Eve, Merry Christmas to all of you that celebrate Christmas. And I hope you all have a fantastic day tomorrow and a fantastic day off of work. So I guess from now until whenever I finish reading these books, maybe around Christmas Eve, I will be reading Christmas books. The first one is In a Holidays by Christina Lauren. Everyone's reading this this holiday season and I've seen kind of mixed reviews. So I'm excited to get into it. And this is the first one I'll be starting with. This is a romance and it is taking place at Christmas time. There is the main girl, May, I think, is staying at this cabin with her family that they go to every single year. And they get some bad news about the cabin. And so on her way back from the cabin trip this Christmas, she, makes kind of like a plea to the universe to show her what will make her happy and then she gets into a car accident and wakes up back in the cabin and starts the day over again so it's kind of like a groundhog day situation but with christmas i'm into it i'm excited to read it and it's not too long so hopefully i'll be able to get into it and it'll get me in the spirit the next book i really want to read is the city baker's guide to country living by louise miller and this is from what i hear gilmore girls in a book that's what's blurbed on the front is that it's Gilmore Girls. And this is about Olivia who is a baker and she accidentally sets her kitchen in her like high-end restaurant she works in on fire. And so she comes to the small town to get away and she is given a job in this inn called Sugar Maple Inn. And she kind of is finding all the reasons why she loves being in a small town. This is the reimagined cover, which I think is astounding and definitely screams Christmas to me. And that's why I bought the book is because I love Gilmore Girls and I love the cover. So I'm excited to get into this and see what all the hype is about. Next, I'm hoping to read The 12 Dates of Christmas by Jenny Bayless. Again, a book that everyone seems to be reading this year. I think it did just come out this year, so that makes sense. But it's all about this girl who is single on Christmas and signs up for dating service where she goes on 12 different dates with 12 different strangers. And she's doing all these like fun holiday things. I've heard it's predictable, but that it's cute and very like Hallmark movie, which I'm definitely in the mood for. So I'm excited for this one. Another one that I may or may not get to in this vlog because I kind of want to read it on Christmas Eve, but that's Green Glass House by Kate Milford. This is a middle grade novel that takes place in this house where people who don't really have anywhere else to be, I think like it's called Smuggler's Inn. So it's a place for criminals to go on Christmas Eve and through Christmas. And I've heard that it's very, very good. It's perfect for like the atmosphere of Christmas time and it's set at Christmas time. So it's not necessarily a Christmas book like the other ones are, but it's set in the same time and it's a wintry book. So I may or may not get to this. We'll see. I've been very bad about like changing up my TBR in the middle of vlogs recently, as you'll see, you probably saw already in my last vlog episode. Maybe I'll get to this one. And last but not least is actually the first book I read for this vlog. I wasn't planning on reading it so quickly, but I didn't realize that it was as short as it was. And that was The Deal of a Lifetime by Frederick Bachman. This book, I would argue to say, isn't even really about Christmas. It is about this man who is given the choice 
of a lifetime. He has this little girl, or he knows this little girl who is dying of cancer, and he kind of makes this choice, or is given this choice, about how to proceed in helping her. And it is really a cool, introspective look into life and what makes you a good person or a good father or a good friend. I think that it explored a lot of different really cool ideas. Um, it's very, very short, so I didn't create huge connections or deep connections to the main character or the narrator, but it's written almost like a letter to his son, which I thought was cool. And it did take a couple twists that I didn't expect. It's a little bit magical realism. I really enjoyed it. I don't know that I would give it a rating because I listened to the audiobook for it today and the audiobook I think in total is only 46 minutes and I listened to it on double speed so I finished it in like 25 minutes, like 24 minutes. So I don't really have a rating. It was short, it was sweet, I liked it. That's all I have to say about it. I didn't form deep connections. And if you're looking for something short that takes place on Christmas Eve, but isn't necessarily Christmassy, maybe you would like that. All right, I have chores to do. I really just kind of want to get into reading. I've been in a big reading slump lately, and I've been a little bit down and just not feeling like myself. So I'm going to pick up in a holidays, and maybe that'll get me out of my funk. And then tonight, maybe I'll watch a Christmas movie to kind of cheer myself up, make myself feel like it's a little more of a holiday spirit. I have read the first 100 pages of In a Holidays by Christina Lauren, and I'm loving it. I think the main character of this book is somebody that I relate to very heavily. She's described as a peacekeeper and a warrior. She is someone who copes with humor, and she just kind of is the, like, person in every situation who is trying to make sure everyone's having a good time <laughs> and I just really love her and she also cares so much about traditions she has so many like quips in conversation that I think are hilarious I think that this girl might be one of the best depictions of my personality in a book I don't know though I guess I'll wait and see how it goes but just her frustration with things not going the way she wants I'm loving the aspect of the time loop. It's going really well. I think it's done really well. And I think that there's just the right amount of it. It's not like happening all the time. And it's not like an everyday time loop like Groundhog Day. It is only in certain instances does the time loop start over, but it always goes back to the same day. So it's basically like she's trying to get through six days without waking up back on the first day. So it's going really well. I'm really, really enjoying it. I also think I have an idea about where the romance is going. Just a little bit of an idea um, because there's one clear person who she has feelings for. Now here's the thing. I think this will go one of two ways. I don't know, but I'm really excited either way. I think that either way I'm going to love the development of the story. Now, the last time I read a Christina Lauren book, my biggest complaint was that I did not like the grand gesture moment. I love that moment in romance novels. It's one of my favorite moments where like the tension is broken. Clearly I'm the peacekeeper <laughs> as mentioned in this book. When I last read a Christina Lauren book, I did not like the grand gesture moment. I did not think it was realistic. I thought it was really cheesy. I loved the book overall. Like I think I gave it four stars. I'm hoping that this one doesn't do the same thing that the other one did. I'm hoping that the grand gesture is more subtle. We need a subtle grand gesture moment. Wednesday and I am home. I am settled in for the evening. I have to make dinner and I have to put the laundry away, but I finished a hundred more pages after work of In Holidays and I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> 
Okay, so I mentioned in the previous check-in that I thought I knew where this was going romance-wise. I thought I knew what was going to happen, and I really wanted that to happen. What I thought was happening is happening. I'm not going to tell you exactly my thoughts because I don't want to spoil anything, but the romance path that it's going down, I'm loving. However, it chose a romance path very quickly, and I think that there are two paths it could take, and I think that the other option is probably what the ending is gonna be, but I don't know. I love where we're at now. So I don't know what's gonna happen. I feel like something has to like go wrong, but I don't know what's gonna go wrong because things are feeling so right. Oh, it's so stressful. <laughs> Romance books, I absolutely love. They're some of my favorites, but it really stresses me out sometimes. Okay, so let's talk about something else that's not related to the romance that I love about this book. In the current like cycle that May is in, she is trying to embrace change. And I think that this book is being really impactful for me right now. I mentioned I am a lot like the main character. And part of that is this like insistence on tradition and a love of tradition and a love of order and things going the way that I expect them to go. She is also very much like that. And I think that this is the perfect book for me to read right now because this year especially, I'm not getting to do a lot of my traditions. A lot of things are not going the way that I want them to or expect them to. And a lot of my traditions that I've done since childhood, since birth, are not happening. And that's frustrating and it's hard to cope with, but seeing a character deal with this exact same thing, not necessarily because of a pandemic, but because of other unrelated circumstances, I think that it's really impactful for me and it's really helping me get through this time where my traditions aren't what I expect them to be and my Christmas season isn't what I expect it to be. So I'm loving it. I have only 100 pages left and depending on how my evening goes, I might keep reading. I'm gonna go, like I said, put the laundry away and cook some dinner. And Brent and I are probably going to watch a movie tonight because we do like a movie advent calendar where we open a little drawer and we pick a movie out to watch, a Christmas movie. And so we might do that. Yesterday we watched the Santa Claus and today I am i haven't checked yet to see what's in the advent calendar spot. So we might watch a movie. We might just kind of hang out where I might have some alone time and read a little bit. I don't know. We'll see where the evening takes me. On a side note, do you guys see this adorable elf? Christmas sweater and on the back has Buddy the Elf and he says Santa. <laughs> Listen, I'm a sucker for Christmas sweaters. Quick update. I'm 50 pages away from the end of In a Holidays and so I originally was really rooting for one person in this book, not May. May is the main character and I root for her all the time. But I was really rooting for one of the love interests because I thought the other one was kind of a jerk and I was like, ew, gross, I don't like him. But then the other one just said something that I'm like, ew, gross, I hate that. So I don't know, I guess we'll see how the next 50 pages wrap up, but that's very frustrating that I now feel weird about both love interests. Okay, I wanted to talk quickly. I know I just updated you. I didn't expect this book to make me emotional. And I think it's because I relate so strongly to the main character. But like she just sat down with her mom and had this heart to heart. And her mom says, I realize everyone around you being messy might make you feel like you can't ever be. But that isn't true. It's okay to be messy sometimes. And I think that as someone who focuses on cleaning up other people's messes so often in life and like worries so much about other people and honestly just worries constantly, <laughs> even just reading somebody talking about how it's okay to be messy and make mistakes, it's just really moving and emotional. And the relationship is also emotional. Like the turmoil that they're going through right now, it's like making me emotional just because it was like so high for so long and then it just like dropped, which is typical in a romance novel. But it did get to me a little bit, so I thought I'd share. Okay, I finished it. And I loved it. It's five stars. I think that this was, for me, the perfect holiday read, the perfect Christmas read. 
It had a little bit of a magical element. It was a pretty typical romance novel in the path that it followed. You get that grand gesture. This one had the extra bonus of two grand gestures. And I mentioned that I was a little nervous that the grand gesture would be over the top. I would say that it almost was for me almost too much. But I think that both of the grand gestures were believable enough. They were not too grand. They were realistic in that somebody could do it. I do think the one was not super fully explained because all of a sudden the main character is able to do something that we haven't really talked about the entire book. So that was a little interesting to me. I will say I love where the love interest went. And I do think that what I mentioned earlier where I was like, oh, that guy's also kind of being a jerk. I think they resolved that nicely and that I was really rooting for the couple by the end. It was just what I wanted to have happen. And I think that that might be why I love it so much. And like I said, I really, really relate to this main character. So I think that that added to me really connecting to this book and loving it. And I think it had the perfect amount of holiday goodness added into it, where they had snowball fights and went Christmas shopping and all that good stuff. So really just a very cute, kind of cheesy Hallmark movie romance novel that I connected to and I really enjoyed. I gave it five stars. I recommend this to anybody who's looking for a cute holiday romance. And with that, I'm gonna go to sleep. Hello. I'm off work. I've changed into my workout clothes. I look kind of like a mess, but it is what it is. We're going to do what we're going to do. I had such a great relaxing evening last night. I didn't update you guys a whole lot, but it was so nice to just stay in and read. And I've been kind of in a reading slump leading up to this month. I've started and, you know, quit on a lot of books. Not deep enough to them, just took a break because I wasn't really feeling anything, but reading in the holidays got me back in the reading spirit. So I'm like full force ready to go again. I have thoughts about in the holidays now that I've slept on it. I'm still gonna give it five stars. I still think it was very relatable for me, but there are things that I think are reasonable, that reasons for why other people don't love it. And one of those is that I mentioned there were two romance directions it could take and the one direction is explored maybe 25% of the way thoroughly that it should have been. It should have been explored way more. It should have been discussed way more. It's kind of built up as this big thing and then kind of brushed away. Overall, again, like I said, I gave it five stars, but that missing element of that other relationship really was a little, I wish that she had explored it more. But we've moved on and we've moved on to the City Baker's Guide to Country Living. And I'm loving it. I downloaded the audiobook, so I was listening to this on my way to and from work today. And so, since getting home, I've read a little bit more and I have finished the first 100 pages of this book. It's definitely going to be a romance, I can feel it. And it's not actually taking place at Christmas yet, which is interesting. It's actually taking place in the fall. So I think that this might be one of those books that's just like a cozy read anytime you read it. The main character is feisty and fierce and doesn't really care what other people think about her. And I love that. He has purple hair and bakes and was sleeping with her boss. <laughs> who was married and she's just kind of like open about being different. She's very open about who she really is. And I do think this is giving me major Gilmore Girls vibes. The main character reminds me a lot of Lorelai just being not the baking aspect. The baking aspect is definitely Suki, but Lorelai shines through in the main character in just the embracing of the quirkiness. I think the main character, the main man has definite Luke vibes. So I'm really, really enjoying it. There is some tension going on in this book that's great. There are some interesting elements of wilderness and music involved, but overall what's shining through right now in the story is the food. It's so descriptive and talks about all these delicious desserts and dinners and all these kind of like fall themed foods that they're making. Mm, I am obsessed with it. I want all kinds of food piled high in front of me. I want everything that they're cooking in this book to be real and in front of me. So yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying it. It definitely has a very small town gossipy vibe which I think is gonna come back into play. And the main character so far in the book is just kind of transitioning into 
going from city life to country living and whether she likes it or is frustrated by it she's still figuring out but she plays the banjo and ha knows how to dance this like line dance that they're doing so I think that she's fitting in well so far you also have kind of like a grumpy old lady who's in charge of the inn where she's hired and I don't know what's going on with her but I feel like she's definitely going to be one of those characters that has a redeeming character arc I just am not sure yet where it's going or what her story is but I do like her. Oh, I also forgot to update you. I've been reading Atomic Love by Jenny Fields. I love this. I'm flying through it. I started it on audiobook and I didn't really like it. I wasn't connecting with it. So I came back to it physically and there's so much amazing stuff going on. And I haven't talked about this book yet, but it is about this main character named Rosalind. People call her Roz. And she was a female scientist during World War II and she played a big hand in the Manhattan Project, so the atomic bomb. And she is now that the war is over, no longer a scientist because they kind of were like, you're a woman and we don't need you. And this is kind of about her story where she's now being sucked into this kind of spy mission because the man who was one of the other scientists she was in love with and now the FBI is looking into him for some treason crimes and some spy stuff. And so we're kind of getting two perspectives in this book, Rosalind and Charlie, who's the FBI agent and who was a prisoner of war during World War II and was treated absolutely horribly and was left with a physical disability after the war. So they're two very interesting perspectives. I think this book has so much amazing commentary on disability and on feminism in the 1950s. There's also a gay character in this, so there's a little bit of diversity in that aspect. But I think so far it's just very interesting. It's almost like watching a movie and I really want to continue reading it. I might continue reading it tonight. I don't know. I'll have to see what I'm in the mood for. But I'm also really enjoying this and I wanted to update you about it. I'm tired. Is that the theme of all of my vlogs? Being tired? Maybe because I am. I wanted to update you on the City Baker's Guide to Country Living. I have just reached page 200 and I'm really liking it. I don't think, I think it's exactly what I thought it would be. I don't think this book would be for everybody. It's kind of slow but also very predictable. It follows a very familiar pattern. It is cozy. It has a romance in it. And I think that that is what I'm loving in this is the cozy wintry vibe or fall vibe, the baking, the music, like playing in a barn, playing music in a barn together. I love all that. And just like the big families coming together in the small town to celebrate the holidays. I think is perfect in this book like the vibes of that are immaculate this book is very traditional so it doesn't have anything that's like sticking out to me like as a unique or like amazing factor but i am really enjoying it so it's kind of hard to describe but in the last 100 pages we have gotten to know the main love interest martin a little bit more he is very much like luke from Gilmore Girls. He's kind of like a gruff country man, but also he like moved away from his family and is back in town to take care of his dad. And so it's a little bit of that element of, is he gonna stick around when his dad passes away or is he going to move back to the city? And kind of contrasting to that, Olivia and this is deciding whether or not she wants to stay in this small town and stay the baker at this inn or go back to a different city not the same city as Martin but she's starting to find her home in this small town and Martin has kind of always been running away something else that I like about this book is that they're older protagonists so they're definitely not there's a little bit more pressure I think 
on them to decide whether they want to settle down. I mean, there's not because there are definitely a couple characters in this book who like got married in their 40s. But that is a com a commentary in this book is when you are in your late 30s and you're wanting to start a family, there's a lot of pressure to settle down and they're both feeling that from different people in their lives. So I don't know. It's, it's good. It's cozy. It's taking a little bit of a sad turn. I'm not going to spoil it for you, but it is taking a little bit of a sad turn. It's giving me major Waitress the Musical vibes. Not really anything to do with the plot, but like the small town baking <laughs> like there's an older man who's kind of the like wisdom of the group there is an older woman who is kind of the sassy one it definitely has some waitress and musical vibes so if you like that you might like this I'm going to let you know my thoughts as I finish so far we haven't even gotten to Christmas we're still just past Thanksgiving and I think that once we hit Christmas it'll be more of what I expected from this book but I'll keep you updated and I'll let you know. Today I finished The City Baker's Guide to Country Living. And in my last update, I said that it was like a very cozy book where not a whole lot of shocking things happened. But in the last chunk of this book, some stuff went down. Like some stuff went down. However, I do think that this book loses a little bit of its specialness just because the focus is not on the plot. I don't even think the focus is really so much on the characters. I think it's really focused on the setting and the atmosphere. I think that was the goal in this book was to make you feel like you're set in a small town that has all these like cozy, like stars hollow vibes from Gilmore Girls. Like, and I think it did that. I think I got all of the vibes that they were trying to give me. I just didn't particularly care deeply about the characters or the romance or really any of the like big plot things that were happening. I think that overall this book had less Christmas than I expected and maybe that's kind of clouding my judgment. The chapter of that takes place in December was one chapter and the rest of the book takes place throughout the whole rest of the year. So don't let the cover fool you. This is not a Christmas love story. <laughs> In fact, the romance is such a minor part of this book. Like, I would say this definitely has more, like, women's literature type vibes to it. If you're looking for a book that's nice and cozy and will just make you feel really at home, I think that this book would be right up your alley. In the end, I might give it, like, three and a half stars. I think it was really good. I might give it four stars. I was invested in it, so I guess that has it going for it. I don't know. Maybe pick this up. I haven't really decided on my thoughts on this. Maybe I'll know better by the end of this vlog. After I finished The City Baker's Guide to Country Living, I thought that I would pick up Atomic Love again, and I haven't put it down since. I can't stop reading this. I'm less than 100 pages away from the ending, and I just wanna keep reading and know what happens. This has some really cool spy aspects. This has really interesting discussions about women set in the 1950s, about women who aren't following a traditional stereotypical path of being a wife and a mother, and women who are going after their dreams. And especially women in this time in the 1950s who had a little taste of that freedom while they're husbands or all of the men were at war and they were given jobs like the women were given typically men held jobs and they got a taste of that and then were immediately told to go back to being wives and mothers and kind of the feeling of loss that they're experiencing and of course it's called atomic love there is a love story in this there's kind of two very interesting and unique romance paths that this book is taking i'm not going to tell you about them because i think they'll be spoilers but they're very unique and both are very high stakes and I haven't read anything like that in a while at least. I might have read something before like it kind of reminds me of like the romances in The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna but way less like dramatic and intense. This is much of a lighter love story but still with some heavy topics. So really interesting, really enjoying it. I love the main character in this and I love the dual perspectives because we're getting Rosalind and Charlie. That's going really really well and I'm hoping to finish this tonight or early tomorrow morning because I can't stop reading it. I don't I don't know what's happening to me. Good morning. I am on Christmas break and I'm so excited. 
I literally woke up this morning and said, thank God I don't have to do any work for the next two weeks because it has been a lot and I'm ready for a break. Last night, I finished Atomic Love by Jenny Fields. I loved it. I think it wrapped up really quickly. I think it could have had more spy elements, more of the like intense drama. I think there could have been a much bigger climax of the book because essentially this book is all leading up to this one big climax but then the climax fell a little bit short for me but overall i really enjoyed the book it was the perfect book to like take me out of my head for a little while it transported me to a completely different time and place and i think that the messages in this book were really great and i've already talked about those so if you're looking for kind of a unique book that focuses on female scientists female empowerment and has kind of a cool fbi spy twist this is it. It also has a great romance. Loved it. Something interesting about this book that I found out yesterday at the end of the book was that this book is based on real life people. So there really was a woman, not Rosalind Porter, but a different woman who was one of the only women on the Manhattan Project. And she was a very influential part of creating the atom bomb, but she was sworn to secrecy. And so she worked on this project while all of the men were at war and kind of made this name for herself, but then she wasn't allowed to tell anybody what she'd created. And so that kind of played into the idea of Rosalind Porter's character. There was a real character called Thomas Weaver. And then Charlie is not necessarily based on anybody real, but his character kind of represents the FBI and all of the prisoners of war at that time who came back and were expected to just dive right back into society and become a contributing member when they were dealing with extreme traumas that they were never given the skills to cope with. Especially after World War II and during the Cold War, there wasn't so much of a support system. It was more expected of them to act like men and come back and immediately start contributing to society because they should be proud for what they did. And that's not how they felt. A lot of them went through extreme torture. A lot of them had extremely traumatic experiences. And especially the people who were struggling with being the only ones who lived, I think that that comes through really clearly in this, that that was a big guilt factor for them and made them feel like they didn't deserve good things in life. Things like that just made this book really special to me. So it may have been that this was the perfect time for me to read it, but I really, really liked it. So I would recommend it. And in honor of starting my Christmas vacation, I started Green Glass House by Kate Milford, which is all about Milo, who is celebrating on his Christmas vacation from school. This book starts on the day after his last day of school. So he is like settling in ready for Christmas vacation and all of a sudden a whole bunch of guests start showing up unexpectedly. Normally they don't come until after Christmas. So Milo gets his Christmas break, but they are showing up on the first day of his Christmas break, which is not usual. This book so far is fantastic and I'm really, really invested. Milo is adopted. He's a Chinese boy adopted by two white parents. They're not described as white necessarily, but it's mentioned many times that he doesn't look like his parents and he's really struggling with that, like the obviousness of his adoption. And I think that that's something I haven't read in a middle grade book yet. I think it's gonna be such a very special part of it. I'm loving the descriptions in this book. The scenery is amazing. The descriptions of like the cold and green glass house. I mean, you can see this cover is the chilliest, winteriest thing you've ever seen. I love that. The descriptions of the house itself, it's old and has a lot of history. And right now, Milo and this little girl named Medi are exploring the house and are solving this mystery because a weird map has shown up and then somebody stole the map. And they are trying to get to know all of the characters in Green Glass House right now. But now things are going missing and Milo's privacy is being invaded. And so they're trying to solve this mystery of who it could possibly be that's doing these things. And like I said, they're trying to get to know all of these characters who are very zany characters, really out there. And they are trying to get to know them right now by having everybody tell a story. And so part of this like smugglers in a history of it is that in inns, traditionally people would gather around the fire after dinner and tell stories about themselves. 
And that's what they're doing now. Milo has convinced everybody to share a story. And so I'm hoping that that will lead to us getting some more information about these characters. And that's what Milo is hoping as well. So I'm really excited to keep reading this. Really enjoying it so far. I'm listening to the audiobook. Love it. The narrator is really great. There aren't any like extreme voices, which I don't always love in middle grade novels, but sometimes are included because it's aimed more for younger kids. But I love the audiobook for this and I'm going to keep reading it because I have my morning free and I want to read a little bit. Okay. I'm halfway through Green Glass House and really enjoying it. There's a really cool mystery element to this. More things have been stolen. I don't know by whom. I don't know why. I think it has something to do with the house, which is really cool. That's a really cool element. And it's just really fun to watch a mystery novel where the kids are the ones solving the mystery and the parents are being very supportive and understanding of this like mystery that they're trying to solve. I love Milo's relationship with his adopted parents and kind of how he's grappling with being adopted. But the atmosphere of this book is incredible. And I don't know if maybe my apartment is colder than usual, but I feel cold reading this. Like so much of it takes place out in the snow or inside this creaky old wooden house. And I just feel very cold. And I love when books can make me feel the way that they're describing things. Like I can feel it in my bones. Really nice. Like I said, I'm halfway through. I still have no idea how it's going to end or why anybody is doing the things they're doing. But it's very, it has a magical element without actually having any magic involved. It's just a mystery that feels magical because it's set in the wintertime in this really elusive house. And they're playing like a Dungeons and Dragons type game, which is really fun and like adds that magical element. So far, I'm loving it. For a middle grade, it's not reading too middle grade-y. And I think it's perfect for leading up to Christmas and to read on Christmas break, if you get one, like I do. Good morning. I have been reading Green Glass House this morning. So really invested in this mystery. I didn't see what was coming. I mentioned previously that I couldn't figure out what the, the solving of the mystery was going to be because things just kept being stolen and they all seemed to have no connection. And I still am not certain what the connection is for all the stolen items, but we did just find out who the thief was, which is really interesting. And I love milo as a character i just think that he has such depth for a like 12 year old boy character i think that he has so many interesting character traits that i don't see often in middle grade or even young adult novels i think that he is such a complex and thoroughly thought out character and i think part of that is because the author of this book does have a connection to adoption and understanding maybe the feelings that people might have with adoption going playing a part in their lives, like being such a clear part of their lives. And even just little things like Milo saying, somebody made a comment about like people adopted, not finding out any information about their family or not knowing anything about their family. And Milo corrects them and says, oh, they're not finding anything out about their birth parents, not their family, because their adopted parents are their family. And things like that, where it's like just a gentle reminder to be conscious of how we are speaking to kids who have been adopted or even adults who are adopted and grew up with people who are not their birth parents. I think that it is very enlightening and very important to see this in a middle grade book so that if you were a child or even an adult who's learning about adoption or has a friend or knows somebody who's adopted, it is very helpful to see what kind of language is harmful. But Milo is just dealing with so many like internal things and I'm loving watching him deal with this and figure out who he is and what his connection to this house is. I'm loving learning about the house. The history of the house is becoming such an important part of this. And I'm so close to the end that I think everything is gonna wrap up beautifully. I'm loving the writing. I'm loving the storytelling aspect. It's very much like I've said about other books that I've read recently. The storytelling aspect is so strong in this that I feel like I'm just being read a bedtime story. I am going to 
keep reading. Maybe I'll finish it this morning, but I'm definitely going to finish this sometime today. And I'm very excited to do so because I want to see how everything wraps up. Okay. I finished Green Glass House. It was so sweet. I think the author, I read the author's note at the end, and I think she really did a great job of doing what she set out to do, which was to tell a story where it's not, the main focus is not adoption, but that it's told through the lens of adoption. So like that aspect of life is kind of woven throughout the story. And I think that she really succeeded in doing that. I could see reasons and motivations behind actions that related back to the idea of being adopted and dealing with that and coping with that. I think the way that Milo's parents in this book discuss adoption with him at the very end is very moving and a great depiction of a conversation that can be very difficult to have. I also really like that this was a book that focused on adoption and being adopted, but from a viewpoint of somebody who has little to no chance of ever finding out what their birth parents are really like or who they were, because a lot of times you'll see like the adoption story where the goal is to find the birth parents or to find information about them, figure out who they were. That's not the goal in this book. The goal in this book is to show what kids are experiencing when that option is not necessarily available to them as well as focusing on a little boy who wants to know about his birth family he's still thinking about them and he's filled with this immense guilt about not appreciating his adoptive family he's dealing with so much intense guilt about even thinking about his birth parents when his adoptive family has given him so much and loves him so dearly. And this book does a great job of focusing on that aspect and letting Milo and other kids know that it's okay to still wonder and think about your birth family. It's normal and it's natural. And it's not necessarily something that you should be ashamed of or feel guilty about. It's something that is going to happen either way. And the parents in this book encourage Milo to talk about it. And I think that that was just a really special aspect of this. In the last 75 pages, there were twists, there were turns. We found out so much information about what was really going on and what the purpose behind everything was. I think everything tied together really well. There were a couple things that as an adult, I'm like, oh, I wish that I got more of a story into this character. I wish I knew fully more explored this character's involvement in this process. But for a middle grade story, I think it was a fantastically done story and I think that it tied things together really well. Plus, this is the start of a series and normally in middle grade series, I find that the first book ends and I find myself thinking that something is lacking. I wanted more from the story, but I didn't feel that, that way with this. I felt that this was a complete story all on its own and that I'm interested in picking up the next book, but it's not something that I need to do immediately to make the book series feel complete. I think this book does a great job of being on its own a fully complete thought. With that being said, I'm going to take a break from reading for a little while and have a nice Christmassy day. I'm definitely gonna wrap presents with Brent today and we're gonna watch a Christmas movie. It is my favorite part of Christmas is going through the gifts I got for everyone and wrapping them up. wondering does anybody else look like this after they work out <laughs> because no matter what I do I could go on like a mild walk like a casual stroll and when I get back the rest of my body is pale as all get out but my face turns into a tomato and I don't know what it is I mean I'm sure it's normal but it, ha it hasn't always been like that it just started a couple years ago and now I'm like I'm always self-conscious like oh my gosh am I dying <laughs> because I worked out like what is this um but speaking of my red workout face I wanted to show you guys something that Brent got me for my birthday that I absolutely love so I have talked about previously on my channel and if you know me in real life you know that I have migraines and Recently, they've been a lot worse and a lot more frequent than normal. So Brent got me this, um, <laughs> I don't even know how to describe it. It's almost like a helmet type thing. 
and we keep it in the freezer but this is like where your nose goes so you I'm gonna show it to you don't laugh at me you pull it over your head like this and <laughs> it has ice packs that are basically pushing on your pressure points for when you have migraines and they go all the way around your head so like it's the most comforting thing especially when I have a migraine but I love using it after I work out now. I'll put it on and just like sit for a few minutes because it helps with the redness and the extreme heat that my face is giving off right now because there's no way I can record or do anything when I look like this. And I have to record like two or three videos today because if I don't, I'm not gonna have anything ready to post the week after Christmas. I just can feel it in my bones. <laughs> I have had a wonderful, relaxing morning. I ended up getting up pretty early and I read a little bit. I did my workout, which I'm excited to have done for the day. I do like a virtual dance class basically, um, but it's like a dance fitness class and it's a massive workout. So it was a lot of work, but I'm happy that it's out of the way so that I can relax for the rest of my day. Like I said, my big, things I have to do today are record videos, but I'm also planning on sitting down and tucking into the 12 dates of Christmas so that I can read this a little bit and have hopefully quite a bit of it finished by the end of today. I just filmed and edited a video because I wanna post it this afternoon. I'm behind on videos, don't judge me. But I wanted to catch up with you on the 12 dates of Christmas because I'm now 100 pages in or a little over 100 pages. I am really enjoying it. I think that these 12 different dates are going to add a really cool spin on like a Christmas romance novel where they do fun Christmassy, Christmassy things because she's doing them with 12 different men. Um, I think I know where this book is going to end up. Like I think I know where we're going, but I don't mind that direction. And it's fun getting to see her meeting all of these men and finding what works for her. I also love her as a main character because she is very open to starting a family on her own. She wants kids, but she doesn't necessarily need a man to do it. She's very open to doing IVF and having children and doing it alone. I love that her family is complicated and messy and she is not really ashamed of that. She is open with it like to her friends and family and to these men that she's meeting. She is very open about her parents' history. I like that this is showing a friendship relationship between two women who are both at different stages in life. Her best friend, Laura, married her high school sweetheart and immediately had two kids. And Kate is kind of a businesswoman who travels back and forth between her small town and downtown London to work for this big firm. She does graphic design and creates fabric, but she also bakes. So she's doing all the stuff. She's very dedicated to her work and she wasn't ready to settle down before, but now she is. But I love that she has this relationship with her friend, Laura, who is settled down and has kids because it really just shows that you can be really close with people who are not at the exact same stage as you, which isn't always represented in books. Typically friends are in the same life stages as you. But her friend Laura is the one who inspires her or like pushes her basically to sign up for this 12 Dates of Christmas program. And I'm loving that program. I'm loving the process that they go through to match people up with dates. I do think it's a little unrealistic that every man she has had a date with is like extremely hot. <laughs> like that's not gonna happen. But I do love like kind of the pitfalls that she's running into. I love the twist that just happened recently. Somebody kind of popped up that I wasn't expecting and I'm loving it. So I'm definitely gonna keep reading now that my video is edited and uploading to YouTube. I am gonna go curl up in bed and read a little bit more. update. I just reached 200-ish pages of the 12 dates of Christmas and I think she just finished her eighth date. Yes, so she's about to go on her ninth date and I love the way this book is set up. It has fairly long chapters but each chapter is a date so it sometimes spans like a week of time and in that time you're getting backstory from her, backstory from Matt, her best friend, and how she knows Laura and Ben, who are her other friends. 
as well as kind of her relationship with her dad is coming through and her dad moving forward after experiencing some tough romantic experiences himself. So I'm loving the setup of this book, each chapter being a completely separate date. This book also smells really good. Like, do you ever just get a book <sighs> that smells so, so much like a book? <sighs> I love the smell of books. But they smell different. Like, not all of them smell the same way, but this just has such a nostalgic book smell to me. Mm, I love book smells. The day went by quickly. <laughs> I had a good time reading in bed and relaxing and I feel like I was productive today. I did the dishes and I put the laundry away, things I didn't include you on because they're boring. But I feel like I had a really good day and productive day here at home. I filmed and edited and uploaded a video and I'm about to film another one, but I just don't wanna do anything and I feel like my day went by quickly. I don't know, I guess we'll see what I can get done this evening. Hopefully I'll read a little bit more, but when Brent comes home, we're probably gonna watch a Christmas movie and eat some dinner. I just finished The 12 Dates of Christmas. I loved it. I'll probably give it five stars. It was exactly what I was looking for. I honestly wanna live in this town. Like if that was possible, I would move there immediately. I think all of these towns and these like Christmas romance novels are so extremely in love with Christmas. Like the whole neighborhood is partaking in Christmas. And like, that's what I want. Somebody tell me where I can move that I can get that vibe. Like the caroling experience that happens in this book, which if you know, you know, there's this whole caroling walk that happens. It's everything. I want it so bad. Maybe I should be the one who has to like organize it. I don't want to do that. But I, I guess if I want that, I could make that happen. I don't know. It was just cute and full of fun Christmas activities. It had the perfect level of romance. Really enjoyed it. It definitely has helped to get me in the Christmas spirit. With that being said, it's late and I'm going to go to bed. I'll check in with you in the morning. Good morning. This is going to be the end of this Christmassy reading vlog. And I thought I'd give my complete final thoughts on the 12 Dates of Christmas before I do a quick wrap up. I think I'm going to change my rating for this from the five star that I originally said to a 4.5. And let me tell you why. I was certain that I knew where the kind of like twist was going to go. And I was really into it. I thought, oh my gosh, what genius writing. This is all going to wrap up in this certain way. And then one specific thing that I wanted to happen or I thought was going to be like a twist didn't happen, even though it was like hinted at as you went through the book. And there was a major aspect of like a conflict featuring the 12 Dates of Christmas program that really was never talked about again. And I didn't like that. I wish that we had gotten more of that conflict with the program itself. And the author did a great job of wrapping this up and I really, really enjoyed it. I, like I mentioned last night, really loved a lot of this book and I think it was exactly what I was looking for. But I think just because it missed the mark on that like twist, I don't think I'm going to give it the full five stars, but it's still really, really enjoyable. If you're looking for a Christmassy read, a Christmassy romance, I think you should pick this up because this was fantastic. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to quickly go through the five books that I ended up reading this week. My goodness, I cannot believe how many books that I've gotten through. I love being on Christmas break because I am just able to read so much more than I normally am. So the first book I read was In a Holidays by Christina Lauren. I gave it five stars. Like I said, this main character was so relatable that I would have given it five stars even if I hated the story, which I didn't. I think that this is my favorite book that I've read this week. Next, I read The City Baker's Guide to Country Living. I ended up giving this like three and a half stars. I think it was fine. This reminds me of something that I would read when I'm like 80 and I don't really want a whole lot of spice. I don't really want a whole lot of like extreme conflict or emotion. It's really just what I would describe as a super cozy book. I enjoyed it a lot. I don't think three and a half stars is a bad rating at all. It just wasn't a new favorite for me. However, this cover, is a new favorite for me and it really did live up to its promise of being a book that reminds you of Gilmore Girls. Next I added a surprise book in here and finished Atomic Love by Jenny Fields. 
I really, really enjoyed this one. I think I'm going to give it four or four and a half stars. It really shocked me how much I enjoyed it. I think the end wrapped up a little bit too quickly, but overall the story was intriguing. It kept me hooked. I really wanted to keep reading and find out what happened. And although it was lacking a little bit in the end portion for me, everything leading up to the end I thought was fantastic. Next, I read Green Glass House, which as you know, is a middle grade novel around the time of Christmas Eve. And again, I think that this was perfect to read this week on my Christmas break. It was slower to get through. I, you might think that's surprising because I read it so quickly, but the only reason I got through it so quickly was because I had the audiobook, which I would recommend because this has very long chapters and is a really long and kind of twisty and turny story with lots of different characters. I'm gonna end up giving this like four, four and a half stars. Overall, I thought it was great middle grade. I thought that the twist and the story itself was very, very interesting. And as a series, I think that this does a great job wrapping it all up on its own so I don't feel like I immediately have to jump into the next book to find out what happened. And then, as you know, I finished up with The 12 Days of Christmas by Jenny Bayless, and I'm going to give it four and a half stars. This was fabulous. It had so many fun Christmassy activities in it, and I loved the romance. I loved kind of the complicated nature of their romance because there were so many twists and so many things that I didn't see coming, so many obstacles in their path. Whereas the other romance that I absolutely loved this week, In a Holidays, was kind of a friends to lovers, but in a very like, oh my gosh, we've loved each other always. I can't believe that trope. This is more of like a friends to enemies, to friends to lovers, to all this kind of stuff. And it adds the complicated aspect of having 12 dates that you're going on. It just really is very interesting. So overall, this was a fantastic reading week. It got me in the spirit of Christmas. I'm still very tired and I think a little bit burnt out like a lot of people are. So here's to you if you are also burnt out this Christmas season because 2020 has been a year. But hopefully after watching this video, you have some new ideas for books that you might want to pick up either this holiday season or next year around Christmas time. And I think really any of these books would be great to read in winter period because they're all very cold and cozy. And that is going to be all for me today, friends. Thank you so much for watching. Comment down below what your favorite Christmas read of the year has been. Please like, comment, subscribe, share this video with anyone who you think would enjoy it. And I'll see you next time. Merry Christmas and happy holidays. Bye friends.